you guys last two games had opportunities in the last couple minutes and weren't able to get very far down the field. Just what can you do to do better in those two minute, one minute situations? Yeah, um, I think it's a, like like a number of things with the offense right now. Just um, a lack of consistency. One play it might be the protection. One play it might be um, the route. The, the uh, quarterback and receiver being on the same page. Um, we practiced it um, a good bit, and honestly, this fall camp, and and even when we've practiced it this season, we've been as good as I've been um, anywhere. But that's kind of been the case with a lot of things. We've been really good at a number of things in practice that we've not necessarily been as good at in game. And so I think you could, you could sort of say that's a microcosm of where we're at on offense right now. Um, doing a lot of things really good in practice some things good in games but a lot of things in games are showing up that are different than I think what we anticipated based on what we saw in practice so when you see that disconnect how do you try to change that I think you I think you have to address two things I think you have to address the players emotional side and mentality and talk about where they are, meet them where they are. I think if, as a coach, in a moment like this, if you um, if you ignore that, then um, then you're short-sighted. And even beyond that, um, that's not what I want to do as a coach. I want to try to help these players learn something that could help us become a better football team. That could help each of them become better people and players. I talked to them about that Monday, um, but then. In a more pragmatic sense, you have to address the things that are holding you back. And um, you know, we had we had five drives where we didn't either turn the football over or have a a major penalty, and we scored points on four of those five. And then we had five that were otherwise where we had either an interception or uh, holding penalty or a chop block and um, not that you can't overcome those things but sets you back and you know in a nutshell I think that's there are a lot of other things that we can improve on uh, starting with me but if we just if we just fix that or even um, cut those things down drastically then we're in a different spot right now how much did not having Daniel affect what you wanted to do against UNLV um a little bit. Uh, I mean, maybe more than a little bit. I think it just puts more of a load on Dev. And, you know, he's in really good shape. And for the most part, I think he can handle that. But it does, it is, I mean, I've, I've felt like for years it might be the most physical position in the sport. Um, and so when you, when, you, uh, when you take those blows over and over and over, not to mention what you're doing in pass protection, uh, it does take a toll on you in the fourth quarter. Um, if we have if we have uh, him back, then yeah, it will certainly help us, and we'll play with two of those guys on the field at the same time more. Jeff, when you look at West Virginia, what do you see from him on film? A lot of what I've seen the last three years. You know, I've had the I've had the pleasure of playing them the last three years, and um, I got a lot of respect for Neil Brown, know him personally, and. Uh, a good coach and a tough guy and a guy that I believe does things the right way um, and his team uh, his team shows that they play tough they play physical they're sound um, on both sides of the ball respect what they do on offense as well um, on defense very aggressive style from their front um, an attacking style um, guys blitz and they're trying to hit that gap 100 miles per hour and run through your face and um, guys up front on the move big guys that can all that can all move on the line of scrimmage and then a multiple coverage system mainly zone but different types of zone in the back end and um, they do a good job they had trouble containing Pitt's quarterback last week is that something Jalen could expose I hope so <laughs> on the topic of Jalen on Friday night, Lance talked about you and Coach Z and Jalen sitting down to find some 
more stuff that is comfortable for Jalen? Just what do those conversations look like and how have those kind of taken place? Yeah, we've done that. Um, we've done all that. Um, but, you know, anytime something isn't working or working as well as you'd like for it to, then you got to address it at, deep, at a deeper level. And, you know, it's easy to... Um, to say this is this is what we're doing and some some guys would maybe put their foot down and say you just got to do this better and i don't believe that's the way to go especially when you have a, a guy like like Jalen that's unique talent um and so um i think i think it's just being totally honest both of us being totally honest about what we're comfortable with and just continuing those conversations more and more and digging a little bit deeper into them i know that west virginia's thinking about using some different players at cornerback and whatnot that they haven't put in before. When, when something like that's on the horizon, how do you kind of prepare for that, especially if they don't have a lot of tape on those guys? Yeah, I, th um, I think they're going to play how they play. You know, I mean, I think their style is going to be their style. And uh, that's th that's been consistent since they've been there. Um, whether there's a new player in that position or not, um, and whether you've had a lot of film on him or not, I think you can you can um, imagine you're gonna get a similar style of play. Um, what you find out when you get into the game sometimes is, is what you might choose to run against, against a particular guy. And if you don't have film on him, then like I said, sometimes you find that out in the game. Jalen was asked this on Friday after the game, if there's any sort of common denominator or theme between the interceptions he's thrown, are you seeing anything? Mm, what did he say? He said they're all different throws, different plays, different mistakes. I'm trying to think through them. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't see a common denominator. No, I don't. I see, I see a guy that's trying to make a play and and trying to help his team and and felt like that was the place to go with the ball and sure. in that moment it just wasn't. Would it be easier if there were a common theme? Because then you just point to that and say, that's what we got to eliminate. I mean, you get that? Yeah, yeah, probably so. But somewhere in there, there is a commonality in what's happening. It might be more emotional or psychological or visual in nature um, as opposed to a particular play type. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll keep working to see what we can uncover. Sure. Let Lance to mention mechanics as one of the things you would look at. Are you seeing everything look like it needs to look there? Yeah, I th well, obviously not on every throw. You know. When you know, I've coached, I've been around a lot of different types of quarterbacks, and the best ones that I've been around um, when they were in college, Cam Newton, Zach Wilson, Jalen. Um, tend to throw the ball at times in ways that you might not um, traditionally teach a quarterback mm -hmm. to throw. And they have the unique ability at times to throw in unusual positions and, and still be accurate. Um, within that, it's still our job um, to help him see how he can do that and still be most effective. And so I think with any player, um, there, are, there are pieces of that, that that can be improved and you know sometimes that may not even have to do with the interception talk, you know, yeah, yeah. I think that's, you know, probably more due to accuracy on some of the other throws. Um, but again, I've said this before, I think Z does a great job with them. And, and I, I just, I know that, I know it's going to get right. With earlier games, you had said you thought there was a sufficient level of frustration on the sideline when things weren't going well for the offense, I guess. Did you feel like that same frustration was there with the UNLV game? Yeah, and even a little bit more. Um, I think every time something happens, you know, it's like, um, I don't know, sometimes when I'm eating, I get aggressive because I'm still a lineman. I bite the side of my mouth or my lip, and then it kind of pisses me off. But then I do it again, and it makes me more mad. And then I do it a third time, and it really makes me angry. And sometimes I even just pound the table. Um, then. My, my wife tells the kids it's okay. Um, <laughs> as frustration grows with the um, number of times something like that happens, sure, yeah. Um, so there's the emotion behind it. And um, I, I told the offense 
uh, well, I told, I met with a specific group of leaders yesterday and talked with some different individuals and, you know, um, I don't know if, I don't know if Illinois was rock bottom for us. I mean, sometimes you gotta hit all the way to the bottom um, before you recognize what, what level of um, commitment you're, you're willing to make to get it right. Do you often meet with leaders like that or is that something that you wanted to do? Yeah, so there's a group of guys that I'll meet with from time to time and then, you know, Lance does that with, with a leadership group, but at times I'll do that with certain guys on the offense, sometimes individually, sometimes collectively. You talked about it in fall camp that you didn't like where the, the O-line was at after three games where you assess you know, how they improved your you know, overall play. Yeah, um, I'm pleased with the progress, but not content that we're where we need to be yet. I thought they played a great first half, and like the rest of our team, um, not a great second half. And uh, that's, that's a... You know that's a, a part of what we're dealing with. You know you've got the practical side of the turnovers and the penalties, and you fix those things and you address them directly. But there's still going to be some of that that happens. Football is not a perfect game, and so when that imperfection shows up, then how do we deal with that? Do we have the resolve to actually walk through that moment and then uh, do well again? And you, you can set yourself up, up into a position for stumbling into the here we go again mentality if you don't learn how to how to come through one of those moments and we need to come through one. Jeff, you a minute ago said every a lot of things you can improve or the team can improve starting with you. You maybe have addressed it. What what are some areas that you're looking at for yourself? I think the biggest thing for me is just trying to put our players in the right the right place. And I told the guys this after the game. I just said, you know, it's my job to prepare us to play and to put every player in the best position possible to have success. And I thought I didn't do that well enough, and so it's on me. Um, and so we've, we've really tried to dig um, even deeper into that this weekend and yesterday put together this game plan by trying to put every guy in a position where he can do the things that he does best. And part of that's learning. Um, me learning what they can do, learning what, for example, what Jared Casey can do and what Trevor Cardell can do and then what Tavita can do and Leighton Cure can do. We're playing with four different tight ends right now at various times and each of them has a different skill set. So for me to expect Jared, even though he has the most experience, to be able to do the same things that Trevor or Tavita might do um, isn't realistic. And so I think a big part of it is just trying to find what players do best, put them in positions where they can do those things, and then um, I, I think, you know, like I said earlier, just in, in talking with Jalen, just things that the quarterback is comfortable with. You know, if you I learned this a long time ago, if your quarterback is comfortable and your offensive line is playing well, then the other things usually work themselves out. I mean, our receivers. Most of those guys could run any route that I call. Running backs, they can they can run any run play we want to run. Um, but if the offensive line doesn't block it very well, it doesn't matter. And so it's we're we're just leaning into the things that I think our guys do best. You, you you've talked about the trust you have in these guys, the veterans, and and it being a two way street too. In your previous stops, has there? I mean, it, you're still new to them, and they're still new to you, especially on game day. Is, is there a, a timeline or a, a, a period that sometimes it just takes to go through to, to fully get that comfort and, and, and kind of have things click in the way they need to click? Is that part um, of it? Yeah, I think there is. I mean, my other, my other two were so um, different than this one. Sure. Uh, the other two, I walked into situations where the offense had not, had not done well at all, right. and um, they were looking for – something new and different and um, this one obviously is different than that but I do I do feel like there's a there's a trust and I do feel like um, I feel like the players are are with us and willing to do what we ask them to and I wouldn't say that if I didn't just walk off the field and have what I thought was our best Tuesday practice from an offense 
and we probably challenged them more than we, I know we did, both mentally and physically challenged them more than we have. And so that tells me that their minds are in the right place. How has the arrangement with uh, you on the field and Z in the box gone so far, and do you plan to continue that? Yeah, on? we've talked about it, and, and um, I think we may we may make that switch. You'll, I, I, we haven't made that decision for sure, but we've talked about it. We talked about it even prior to the last game. I mean, we've talked about it a number of times just because that can go either direction. I'm comfortable either place. Z's comfortable either place. Um, but in in giving me the ability to get upstairs and get in a more sterile environment and see it a little bit better. And then, you know, probably more than anything, giving Z the opportunity to be with Jalen on the sidelines as he's the one who's with them every day, um, certainly more than I am. Uh, I would say there's, there's, a, there's a better chance that we do that than not. Anything else for Coach Rhodes? Okay. <laughs>